Richard Wumbrand was born the youngest of four boys in a Jewish family in 1909 in Bucharest in Romania. He was very clever and was fluent in nine languages. He soon became a sharp young businessman, making money in whatever way he possibly could. But he wanted nothing to do with God. He was happy and he was married to a lady called Sabina. But everything changed in 1938. In a tiny Romanian village, an old carpenter named Christian Wolfkays lay sick, and the only person to visit him was a Jewish friend. When he recovered, he was so grateful to God that he prayed every day for the opportunity to share the gospel with a Jewish person. And although none lived in his village, he still prayed. One day, a young, newly married Jewish couple arrived in this very village on holiday. It was the Vumbrands. Richard had been advised by his doctor to go on holiday in the mountains where the air was clear to help with an illness that he had. The carpenter saw them and excitedly gave Richard a Bible. Richard had read the Bible once before but didn't understand any of it. However, this time when he read it, his heart was excited by what he read. and He didn't know why until he learned the secret. This carpenter and his wife had spent many long hours every day praying for him. The Bible taught Richard that for God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. Richard and Sabina both realised that they were sinners and they needed to be forgiven and that could only happen through Jesus. Richard soon became a preacher. During the Second World War, Richard and Sabina had many opportunities to share the good news. They shared over one million Bibles, they preached in bomb shelters, and they rescued Jewish children from the Nazis. Richard and Sabina were often arrested and beaten and nearly executed because the Nazis hated Jewish people like the Von Brands. In 1945, a new government took over, but they were also very cruel and hated anyone who believed in God. Richard and Sabina started a secret church so that they could carry on meeting. One time, the Vumbrands were forced to attend a government meeting where all the religious leaders were expected to say that they no longer believed in God and that the government was the most important thing. There were about 4,000 people there. Richard stood and told everyone that their loyalty was to Jesus and not the government. They were furious and turned off his microphone. Soon afterwards, he was kidnapped by the secret police and spent the next 14 years in prison where they treated him horribly. This is what he said. I was led to a prison 30 feet below the ground where for years I was kept alone in a cell. The only people I saw were the ones who beat and tortured me. But the King of Kings, Jesus, was with us. He wiped our tears away. He sent us words of love and words of forgiveness. There were nights when I could sit in my prison cell, cold, hungry and in pain. But there in the darkness I would sing songs of joy. They could take my comforts and my possessions. They could take my dignity and my health. They could take my wife and my children. They could even take my life, but they could not take my Jesus from me. We no longer believed about God because Bible verses said it. We remembered about God because we experienced him. After years of being alone, we were put together in huge cells, sometimes with 300 prisoners in each cell. It was strictly forbidden to preach to other prisoners. It was understood that whoever was caught doing this would be beaten. A number of us decided it was worth it. It was a deal. We preached and they beat us. We were happy preaching, they were happy beating us. So everyone was happy. Richard prayed and loved those that were cruel to him. And some of them even came to know Jesus for themselves. His wife, Sabina, was also imprisoned. She was forced to serve as a labourer on the Danube Canal Project, leaving their nine-year-old son, Mihai, alone and homeless. Thankfully, he was taken in by Christian friends who risked being put in prison just by looking after him. She was released three years later, and sometime later, Richard was too. In 1965, organisations from outside Romania paid $10,000 to allow the Vumbran family to leave Romania. Richard didn't want to leave, but he was convinced by other church leaders to leave so that he could become a voice to the world for the underground church. So they all left Romania. Richard decided that they would be a voice for Christians suffering under cruel governments. And he wrote his story down in a book called Tortured for Christ. 
Years later, in 1990, the government which had been so cruel to Christians were defeated. The von Brands returned to Romania for the first time in 25 years. Richard preached in many churches and also on public television. In addition, a Christian printing facility and bookstore were opened in Bucharest and city officials offered storage below the palace of the leader who had been so cruel to the believers, the very site where Richard had been kept in prison. It's amazing, isn't it? On August the 11th, 2000, Sabina went home to be with the Lord and a year later, a month before his 92nd birthday, Richard also died. He is a great example of someone who trusted in Jesus even in the most difficult of situations. The work he started, The Voice for the Martyrs, continues today in more than 60 countries where Christians are treated badly. We thank you for the work of Jesus in the life of Richard and Sabina Vumbrand.